Hello, everybody. Uh, I think we're live. <laughs> so this is a grand experiment. I think everything's working. I think it's all going. Uh, hey, I'm J.D. Roth uh, from Get Rich Slowly. I founded Get Rich Slowly in 2006. Uh, sold it for a while, bought it back. Now I'm back. Uh, I write about money. I've been writing about money for 12 years. Uh, haven't done much with the Facebook group, but we're working on that. And as part of that, we want to do these Saturday morning video chats just chat about yeah that. but maybe not at eight in the morning we don't have to figure <laughs> this out because I, my hair's still wet got out of the shower <laughs> so i don't know whose brilliant idea it was to start this early oh uh, i figured it coffee. with yeah coffee yeah i figured with eight o'clock uh, pacific then uh, it's 11 o'clock eastern <laughs> hopefully it works out for some people right we'll see, we'll see. so uh to kick things off we thought we would talk about uh, relationships relationships of money um for me when i write it get rich slowly uh, I often write that it's not the math that's hard because the math of money is pretty easy, right? You just spend the less than you earn and uh, save the rest. Uh, but what makes money difficult, and what makes it difficult to build wealth, is actually the emotional stuff, the psychological stuff. Yeah. And a lot of that comes from relationships. It does. And the history and how you were raised. Um, yeah. You know, both of us come from previous marriages where we, we handled it differently than you guys did. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot to it psychologically, and a lot of agreements and renegotiating things as yeah. as situations change. You know, our our scenario has changed a lot the last couple of years. Yeah, and we've gone in and out of different financial scenarios, so there's lots of negotiating that happens. And um, so, as, as a little background, uh, Kim and I have been together for it'll be seven years in April. April. <laughs> Well, we're getting old too. We're getting old. <laughs> we can't keep track of simple numbers. Yeah, we've been together about six and a half years. Uh, we were both married previously. Uh, I was together with my ex-wife for about twenty-three years. Um, I was with Bob for eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the way we handle money uh, in each of the relationships has been different. So, for example, with me and Chris, we always kept our finances separately. I know most most couples combine their finances. Right? Yeah, that's what we did. I mean, we you, were young. You combined them? We didn't know yeah. any different. And not only that, we didn't have very much money. And so combined income was the only way to actually access stuff and get things and buy when you're starting out, you know, a new refrigerator and the things you need. Yeah. Yeah. And so how was that sharing? Uh, it was awful. Having short account. <laughs> why, why was it awful? We're not doing it again, right? So like, yeah. <laughs> we um, do it a little bit. We'll probably a talk little about bit. that. Yeah. Um, it was not good for several reasons. Um, it was all we knew, but it got us into debt because he had different spending habits than I did. I am mm. very frugal, very money conscious. I'm more of a saver than a spender. He was the exact opposite, was raised very differently than I was, and just what he wanted, he bought. And so there was not always a lot of discussion about purchases, whether or not we could afford or not afford them. And so we right. were in debt our entire marriage. We had credit card debt. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. I mean, I think we topped out of around 10000 but that was also 20 years ago. So, right. So that was a lot more money then. Um, but we had disagreements about spending money. The, the only real arguments we ever had was in that, and I know this is true for lots of people, was around money and um, how we were spending it. And as a matter of fact, only one of us was in charge of paying the bills, and that was me. And so yeah. I would get more frustrated. And eventually I just said, screw it, you, you take the checkbook over. You know, because he was the one that had more issues with the spending. I wanted him to be more involved yeah. in the decisions. And, and so in, in my relationship, in my marriage with Chris, Chris was fantastic with money. Uh, from the very get-go, she knew what she was doing. Um, there's a theme here. The women know what they're doing with money. The <laughs> I know that's not always true, but there's a theme in these, these two stories. Uh, but Chris was great with money. Uh, she'd always set money aside for savings, even from the uh, first oh, time she Somebody's saying they can barely hear us, JD. That everything oh. turned up. Thanks, Sheila. Well, this is this is why we might need a microphone, and this is we'll learn things as we go. Is it any better if we're closer? I don't know whether uh, they'll be able to respond quickly. Um, well, this is this is good to learn. <laughs> we might have to stop and restart if people can't hear. Um, uh, so anyway, with uh, Chris, she was always exhibiting good habits. She didn't have credit card debt. Uh, it's a little better. Um, a little better. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what we can do about that. I have a microphone. I can go get a microphone. Um, Back up to you, sweetie. All right. Technical glitch number one. <laughs> and this is why we do this. Kim will talk about something while I go get the microphone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, this is our first one. So, oh, somebody said it's better. 
Um, anyway, so we're going to talk about how he and I have negotiated the tax finances over the last seven years, and it's worked a lot better than um, what I did previously in my other marriage. So, well, we're not married. Anyway, sorry guys, keeps me back just a sec. <laughs> better yes better yes get closer you guys really really want closer <laughs> I'm just kidding I do want to say one thing though about um, I'm not sure what scenario you guys are in with your finances but when the person who was frugal was in charge of the money is when we had the disagreements when we put the person that wasn't frugal and kind of made him a little bit more conscious about the spending it did it did help um, and we didn't have as many disagreements, but it still didn't really help our financial struggles because the psychology is still there behind why we were making the purchases or not. They said it's a little better closer, sweetie. Okay. Okay. But now we have a fix. And if you guys have questions while we're going or something specific you want us to talk about, just please type it. We're, we're trying to look. We need our glasses, I think, but okay. Now we have to figure out whether this actually connects or not. All right. I don't lights know whether that on. helps. The lights on. All right. Oh, hey, Kira says I can hear you guys loud and clear. <laughs> Sweet. Maybe it's somebody else's computer, not ours. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So now we're back. Excellent. Um, so we were talking about how we were in our previous marriages, yeah. why that did or didn't work. Um, so, so with Chris, I was a spender. I always had spending habits. So you, you had talked about the patterns that we learned growing up, yeah. and it was very true that in my family. Uh, my parents didn't have a lot of money, right? right. And uh, when they did have money, they spent it. This is the behavior they modeled, that money was kind of a scarce resource. Uh, you don't have it, and when you do have it, you, you spend it because you don't know when you're going to have it again. Right. And it didn't make any sense, but that's what we did. It was peaks and valleys yeah. your whole childhood. Yeah. Yep. Kind of winded from running. <laughs> <sighs> um, so maybe we should talk. I want to just see if anybody has any specific questions. Will this video be uploaded to the Facebook page later? Yes, it will. I, I think I think the video just automatically posts. Like I say, it's a grand experiment. It'll be fun. Right. Um, yeah. So I learned bad behavior from my parents. Uh, that you know, I watched Chris. Chris had totally different behavior in the marriage, and I could see that she was doing the right things, and what was what she was doing was working. And what I was doing wasn't working, and yet I still did stupid things like buy stuff on credit all the time. Yeah, I just spent money when I had it. It's the credit. It's the credit cards. That's the big. That's the big issue. You know. And I feel like since the crash, more people have gotten tuned into not overspending, living within your in your means. If you don't have the cash, don't buy it. I mean, that seems like a fairly reasonable principle. But I know it's not easy, and especially if you don't have a a high earning. Um, income, or you have kids, or you have other things, and, and what if an emergency happens? You know, how how do you handle that kind of scenario? Yeah. Unless you've already built up that buffer, um, which now at this stage in life, I have all those things under control. But in my twenties, yeah, uh, and when you're younger, you, I mean, you have less experience uh, in everything in all aspects of life, whether it's money management or relationships. So I feel like now uh, I'll be fifty next year. You're much younger than I am. Not much. <laughs> no. Hi, Tony. Um, that I feel like you and I have a, a much different, well, it, it's, it's in some ways it's similar to the approach that I had with Chris in that she and I had separate finances. So you and I largely have yeah. separate finances, but we do pool money for certain big purchases. Again, we've been together for six and a half years. Um, and during that time we took a RV trip. It was a 15 month RV trip across yeah. the United States. It cost money to buy that RV. It cost money to go on that trip. And so to make that all work, you and I had to coordinate our finances yep. together. Yeah. Um, you had to quit exactly. your job. the first time. Yeah. Ooh, <clears throat> that was <laughs> scary. That was a huge, huge step. It was huge because A, I had to put a lot of trust into you. Right. That when we got back, you were going to have my back until I got back, you know, mm -hmm. found another job again. Mm -hmm. And I hustled my butt <clears throat> off that whole first year when we got back. But um, yeah, that was the first time we'd ever really combined finances, and it worked just fine. We didn't have any issues with that, but we're also very well established. You know, I've got my own. It's never really been an issue for us. The biggest issue was that JD and I are in different financial brackets. You know, I still work a nine to five, and right. I'm still saving for retirement. And, you know, I still really watch my money and what I spend it on. I'm very frugal. I'm very money conscious. Um, <laughs> we're outside. The dog's outside, too. 
Uh, whereas JD has his financial nest egg, he's financially independent, he doesn't have to earn an income if he doesn't want to. Right. Um, and so for a long time for me, that was really difficult because I felt like A, I needed to try to keep up with you. B, I always wanted to contribute half. And you right. know, you know the, the stuff we went through. Yeah. Um, so was it difficult for you at the start when we were just dating and yeah. just getting to know each other? It was difficult the first like two or three years. It's only been the last couple of years that I don't always feel like I need to put down my credit card and pay half when we're at dinner or when we go to Costco. Or, right. And the way that we worked it out is, well, at least in my mind, this is how it works, mm -hmm. is like when it comes to eating out for dinner or other things, like he'll buy the main meal and then I'll take us out for drinks after. It's like I can afford 40 bucks, not right. 140 bucks. Right, right, right. Same thing when we go to like games or events or whatever, JD will pick up the larger portion of the tab and then I'll do the littler things that are still within my uh, budget and then I still feel like I'm contributing and um, it, it works for me mentally so that yeah. I don't feel like a it, it, and I think it works for me too and I appreciate that you want to do half I always have I, yeah. I always think it's amazing um, and yet at the same time I'm happy to pick up the larger share because I know I do have more right. resources right now uh, so when Chris and I uh, were first together she and uh, I split thank you I'll lean closer I just saw the note yeah and I tried to move it closer to you so um, when Chris and I were together, at, at the start, we would split everything 50-50. In fact, we did that for a lot of the marriage. We would, I kept a running total of how much I owed Chris or how much he owed me. It was usually me owing Chris. Uh, because remember, I was bad with money. I was bad with money for so long. And uh, now, I, I like not doing that score thing. It's, a very, it's much more just give and take. It's a natural thing. Yeah, and I feel like it, it all kind of balances out anyway. We have like a list on the, the fridge. And yeah. Whoever's going to the store buys what's on the list. Yeah, you know? exactly. Right. We don't do any tit for tat with money at all. No. Um, I guess if one of us was feeling bent out of shape about it, we would. But I feel like both of us are pretty easygoing and yeah, feel like we do our share. So now one interesting thing is, so for, for the small stuff, we just kind of make it work. Uh, but for big stuff, like take the house. We, we bought this house last year. It's uh, 442000 I think is what the final purchase price was. Um, and so because I had cash available to pay for the house from my previous home, I just rolled it over into this. Uh, I'm the one who paid for it outright. But Kim wants the, wants ownership in it too. So what you're doing is essentially paying me rent or giving me a, a fake mortgage every month. Yeah. So, well, what actually happened, if you remember, is we had just, we'd only been back from our RV trip for a year and I only had one year of, if this is, for people who are getting ready to do this, keep this in mind. Okay, I have excellent credit. Like it's eight twenty nine or something. Yeah, credit yeah, score. Yeah, her credit score um, is higher than mine. Yes. I have plenty of money in savings and retirement. I mean, I have cushions and things, and on paper I look great. However, they don't care when you go to apply for a loan. I wanted to just put in my half of the house right. for myself, but I didn't qualify because I didn't have long enough work history to even gone on this trip. Um, and you have to have a minimum of two years for them to even look at you regardless. And, and even though I had enough money in the bank to buy the home outright, they still wouldn't give me a loan. This this is a- Yeah, we it, were in a weird, it was weird. Yeah, it was really interesting. This is something that people should know uh, if you're thinking about early retirement or financial independence is it, it can be tough to get a mortgage. Uh, in a lot of cases, yeah. if you don't have verifiable income, they won't give you a mortgage yeah. even though you've got the cash yeah. in mutual funds or in the bank or whatever that they, they just won't give you the loan yeah exactly so our solution to that was that um i pay some of the household bills he pays some of the household yeah. bills and then i pay him what is essentially my portion of the mortgage every month so yeah. that's how it works out for and I, I keep a spreadsheet because i love my spreadsheets and every, every month i could see oh kim <laughs> kim owns another 0.1 percent of the house so <laughs> that's fun um, but we don't have so this is one of the things i want to point out is and i know this is different for everybody is that we don't have fights about money no. Zero, not one. We've mm -hmm. never had an issue with money. Although your approach, and I'm sure Chris would verify mm -hmm. this, to money is much different than it was when you were in your marriage. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and so for us, doing it this way and having things separate, but where we both just pitch in. Um, you, you know, I, it, you brought up a great point. My approach to money is very different now than when I was younger. Because, again, when I was younger, I didn't know any better. I was modeling the uh, habits I had learned from my parents. Uh, and so when Chris and I were first dating, and uh, I'm trying to remember, were we married? We were still living in Salem. So we weren't married yet. Uh, we were just dating. And I wanted to get a house. Uh, I really wanted to buy a house. And she was very worried about that. She's like, no way. I don't want to do a house when you've got this much debt. Um, 
I guess we didn't mention that before a little bit too. Um, anyway, it, it took a long time for her to come around that uh, it was okay to buy a house, even though I had credit card debt. But I can understand her concerns because the credit card debt, I never got rid of it uh, until about 10 years after we were married. That was a yeah. long time. Yeah. And uh, you can probably be scary to it would be scary to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Not going to lie. I'm <laughs> with Chris on this one. Yeah. Um, um, so do we want to talk about any any other topics specifically like savings? And, and uh, by the way, for people who don't mind doing online savings accounts, Ally Bank is the best customer. I love that. Kim, Kim, I, I don't use Ally. Uh, Kim does. She, she loves it. She loves her USAA accounts too. Yeah. In fact, she loves her account so much that uh, we're going to talk about this in a few weeks. So our plan oh, is to, <laughs> yes, yes, we are. <laughs> so our plan is to do uh, four of these uh, Saturday morning money talks as a test, basically, to see uh, see how they work, see if you guys like it, see if we like it. Um, and I'm sure we'll get more polished as time goes on. But for the most part, we're just going to be winging it like this. It's just kind of a casual conversation. Uh, so next week, I want to talk about the pros and cons of homeownership because we did buy this house recently and it's it's been both good and bad um the week after that i want to talk about choosing the best bank accounts and credit cards and okay. this is this is actually uh you were the inspiration for that because you love your ally account so much I do. and then uh the final one for this test run will be uh, the first of september and we'll talk about uh ways to earn more money side hustles and stuff like that oh i love that that's great See, kim doesn't even we're just making this up because <laughs> i have a plan uh, i just get up Take a shower, drink my coffee, talk. That's right. Um, yeah, so let me see, let me see. I'm gonna flip through my my book here. Your money, the missing manual. I wrote that almost ten years ago now. <clears throat> so I'm trying to think about other things, uh, other important topics for uh, managing money in relationships. Well, this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the relationship um, that you're in, but something that, that I learned early on that was really, really valuable for me was that you'll spend whatever you have or you think you have available, right? And so I worked for an employer once who was awesome, and he told me to just auto withdraw whatever amount you want to put into your retirement, savings, vacation fund, whatever. Set up one, two, three different accounts. And most people have auto deposit now, right? I think. Um, I've had yeah. it for years. But I have it where money is taken directly out of my paycheck before I even see it. Um, I always make sure I have enough, obviously, to pay bills and stuff. But so then whatever's actually in my checking account is what I mentally think I have to live on for the month. It's mm -hmm. what keeps me on budget. It's um, it's a great way to, to save because you just forget you have that money. And the next thing you know, you've got money to stick in your retirement at the end of the year or yeah. take that vacation or, or emergency fund for your car or whatever. And, and didn't you tell me the other day you're setting aside a certain amount each month for a yes. future car? How much is it? Six hundred a month? Or, I'm or sixty a month. <laughs> no, I'm setting aside nine hundred dollars a month. Because, or oh, okay, that, yeah, that's amazing. Because that right. the money that I took out uh, to to go on this trip, this year long RV trip, was money. So I've been driving the same car for twenty some odd years, right? It's a nineteen ninety seven Honda Accord, almost two hundred and fifty thousand miles on it. I'll mm -hmm. drive the damn thing till it dies if I can. Okay, <laughs> but. What I did is once I paid it off, I just kept pretending like I had a car payment and I put that money yeah. into a high yield interest bearing account like a CD or money market or, or right now Ally has pretty good uh, savings rates. And I was just going to buy my car out, right? But then we decided, hey, let's take a trip around the U.S. in an RV. And so all that money went away yeah. because I had no income for a year and a half. Um, so now I'm rebuilding that up. So I'm socking away a butt ton right now yeah. for that. I, I, yeah. I think that's smart. And Because uh, my car is going to die. I mean, it's old. Yeah, and I've got the Mini Cooper. The Mini Cooper is not exactly a spring chicken either. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about things that are uh, difficult, more difficult for us because we are not married. Uh, by the way, I've got a book here that I really love. I recommend for all uh, unmarried couples that are in long-term committed relationships. It's called Money Without Matrimony. It's out of print, but you can find it uh, for cheap on Amazon. It's Money Without Ma Matrimony by uh, Cheryl Garrett and Deborah Nyman. Um, it's a great book about how to approach different topics when you're in a long-term relationship uh, but you don't have the protections of marriage so in our case one thing that i think is more difficult for us than would be if we were married is health insurance oh right um, God, that's expensive yeah uh because i'm self-employed i don't have 
a job that provides health insurance, uh, because we're not married, I can't have health insurance uh, from you. Um, you get free dentistry. I do get free dentistry. So Kim is a dental <laughs> hygienist. So uh, I do get free dentistry, which is good. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I mean, I have to pay for mine too, and it's, it's ridiculous. I'm yeah. sure there are people that don't have employer covered, uh, well, either retirement or or uh, medical expenses, and it's it's ridiculously expensive. For for both of us, it's like a house payment. Yeah, mine's three hundred sixty dollars a month, and I get very little out of it. Uh, th that's because I'm a healthy person right now, and so I mean, eventually, yeah, I'll probably get my fair share. But right now, not so much. Um, but the the health insurance remains a big issue for us. Um, but would that change if we were married? Neither one of us has coverage provided by an employer. Yeah, that, that's a good point. But I, I feel like uh, if one of us, our loud puppy is right there, um, I feel like if we were married, then if one of us, we, we could see. Right. I mean, if right, that were right, an issue, right. we could seek it out. Right, and a lot of people of do have that. that. Yeah. So. Um, another thing that gets interesting uh, when you're in any kind of relationship is estate planning, like. So when, when I was married, it, it's just assumed that by default, everything goes to your, to your spouse. Right. But when you're in a long-term committed relationship, uh, you've got to make that explicit. It, it, like in my case, uh, I, right now I want my estate to go to Kim. So I had to make sure that I modified the will so it explicitly says that. Um, yeah, we did it together, actually. And the thing yeah. that spawned it was taking this big, long trip where we're like, yeah, who knows what's going to happen on the road. That's right. Yeah. I so we sat about down that. and we both wrote out our wills. We wrote that we did whatever paperwork was necessary to make sure that either one of us is handled in the case that the other one dies. So I just realized that the trip. So we went on this 15 month RV trip and we were in close quarters for a long time. And it brought out some differences in the way that you and I spend. Uh, I am more of a spender. There, there's no question. Oh, God. Everywhere we went, he wanted to buy some little trinket. And I'm like, you realize we're in an RV, right? It's limited space. If you have a shoebox and it fits in there. <laughs> so I managed to uh, get my little trinkets that fit in the, the shoebox. Uh, you did? <laughs> yeah. So I would get little buttons whenever we went to a national park or whatever. Little pit. Um, but I, I, I had a tendency to want to, even in the RV, I wanted to buy books. I know. I wanted to, I wanted to buy t-shirts. Yeah, I started buying t-shirts. Um, it's all emotional stuff with you. You always want to buy things that, that, uh, yeah, yeah. That remind me of good times. Yep. Um, so was that frustrating for you at all? Yes. That's... Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you got to decide, is this the hill I want to die on? Right? Like right. most things that, that come up like that, he and I negotiate the waters really well. I mean, I think any long-term relationship takes lots of renegotiating the scenario. She, we already mentioned that. And you be, you were reasonable. You were reasonable yeah. for the most part, but I really had to. I mean, every time we stopped somewhere, you wanted, and you get pissy with me <laughs> when I point it out. And I'm like, do you really need that? You know, yeah. So you got to try. I mean, it's whatever works for you to try to make sure that both people leave whatever scenario you're in satisfied. He got to take something home, but it was not going to drive me crazy being, you know. Yeah, and, and I think that even in day to day life, uh, I'm much less of a spender than I used to be, uh, but I do tend to spend more especially on certain things yeah. than you do or you would. As an example, uh, because I'm on my computer all day, I, I live on my computer, I'm the kind of guy who wants to buy a new computer frequently. Um, and when I'm spending that much on technology, I think sometimes you're like, why are you doing this? Why are you getting a new computer? Why are you getting a new iPad? I've never known anybody who can fill up the space on their computer for one and be like, hey, my, my memory's full. Time yeah, for a yeah, new yeah. one. Well, I can't do that so much anymore. But, uh, I used to be able to. Um, yeah, I do. I do question stuff like that, but it still doesn't be become a point of contention with us. I just kind of file it away in the... Now, if we had shared, if we were sharing a bank account and we were sharing our finances, this would be an issue we would just be discussing more. But because yeah. we don't and it's just your money you're so, spending... How did you handle it? Uh, in your relationship with Ross, like when he was spending and it frustrated we just, you. We had to just keep having talks, but I was constantly frustrated. Yeah. And I was very frustrated with the fact that we had debt because I'm a saver, I'm not a spender. And uh, yeah, it, it was it was a point of contention. Hey, Marla. Mm -hmm. Maria. Oh, I thought that said, see, glasses. <laughs> <laughs> We're both getting old. We both need our glasses full time. The screen is blurry. 
Yeah, um, so that's one thing, you know, being married or sharing, married or not married, whether when you're sharing, I think people that share their uh, bank accounts are going to tend to have more disagreements, or at least we did. Yeah. And, you know, Chris and I, we never really fought about money, uh, but she would get very, very frustrated. And I remember back when early on in the marriage, the squirrels are, you know, she's got to protect us from the squirrels. Uh, early on in the marriage, uh, I really had this bad spending habit where I wanted to buy just anything. I, I couldn't wait. I had to have instant gratification. And I remember one time, uh, some new video game console had come out in the mid 1990s. And I went out and I bought it and I brought it home. And this is right in the middle of when I was my worst debt experience and stuff. Going on. And Chris knew that I was struggling with the debt. And I came home with that video game system. And she was, she wasn't irate, but she was so disappointed. And I can't, she and I never really had fights, but she was, yeah, it, it, I had turned around. I took the video game system back. I didn't even open it. And uh, now did like, you get mad at her for, I mean, cause obviously you felt guilty and could return it, but was your, were your emotions directed at her or yourself or both? Just general frustration with the world. For me, I always, back then, I always thought it was like <clears throat> the world doing stuff to me. And so I felt like I, I didn't have uh, a lot of money because I was unlucky and yeah. I didn't get the right break. And uh, so I was frustrated that I had to take the video game system back that I didn't really blame Chris. Um, I didn't really own it myself, though, that I was causing my own financial it's like a huge moment, the aha moment when you finally own your own situation. And it gives you power, yeah. you know? I mean, I get, I almost, so in the way that you have that kind of like addiction to purchasing and it gives you that higher, that satisfaction, I get the same thing from saving. Like yeah. I literally, there's this little, there's a little button on my USAA account. Every time I put a deposit, it makes a little ching ching sound. It, it gives me almost like I'm playing a video game or like I'm pulling the, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, slot I think that's machine. Pretty clever. Yeah, it is really clever on their part. But I, I get that same kind of high from saving money. The deferred gratification um, financially for me, for some reason, I don't know if it's innate or the way I was raised or what, but it, it gives me huge satisfaction, which is good. And then we balance each other out in that way too. You yeah. know, not that you need to worry about money as much as I do, but I do kind of check and balance you on the same front every day. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. Who doesn't want it? There's somebody like, who doesn't, who want, doesn't a want a new computer? computer all the yeah. time? Yeah, I know. I do. And uh, <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, are there other topics that we should bring up here about uh, managing money and relationships? So is this a good first, first one? I can't think of anything Does else. anyone have any questions or anything that you'd like us to cover? <clears throat> I'll give them like 30 seconds. You can tell a story. <laughs> put some on I'm only just now getting through my first cup of coffee, so no stories yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, even though we don't have much prepared for this week and we're just doing it as a test run, my plan for the future is uh, when we do these, they are going to be more informal, but I will have some, try to have some takeaways uh, for viewers. So like next week when we talk about the pros and cons of home, home ownership, I'll talk about the things that uh, you and I do that we think help make us better homeowners, maybe some things that we've done wrong. Okay. <clears throat> so sounds like a plan. I and of course, you guys can always send in your questions. Absolutely. Um, for like for next week's topics or things you want us specifically to hit or takeaways you want, um, and then we can all always make sure that happens as well. Yeah. And then Maria just said, "Tell me about the glasses thing." <laughs> That's because Maria wears glasses too. <laughs> I don't know whether you've met Maria or not. I think I've met Maria. Mar Maria and I yeah. st stood together. Yeah. Maria lives in uh, England, and she and I stood across the prime meridian together. Very cool. The last time I was in London. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer oh is God, watching awesome. with her dog, and uh, yeah. So we've got we've got a little hound dog that we picked up on the RV trip, and uh, she's just anything that uh, she can smell, she wants to bark at. Yeah, it's true. Or do. Somebody wants to know why uh, you're not doing the podcast. Um, it's easier, huh? Yes. <laughs> Lower yeah. barrier of entry. <laughs> just turn it on and start talking. Well, I thought about doing a podcast. Um, but, and uh, honestly, I've recorded, I think, eight episodes for a podcast. Um, that was really? way, yeah, when we were on the know. trip. Yeah, when I was starting Money Box. Huh. So uh, I have a bunch of episodes recorded. Uh, and, and I've thought about it. It's uh, 
We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. We're, we're testing the waters with it. I, I'm a blogger. I'm a writer. I like to write. Uh, so this other stuff is newfangled, and it, it makes it tough. Tony wants to know if Tally's going to be on next week. I don't even know where she went, but at least she yeah. stopped barking. Yeah. So that's it, I think, for yeah. right now. Um, we'll be back again next Saturday at 8 o'clock Pacific, uh, 11 o'clock Eastern. And we'll be, we will be talking about the pros and cons of homeownership. Yeah. What sounds you should good. do uh, to be an effective homeowner. All right. All right. And yes, that is our new hot tub. That's <laughs> where JD will probably be headed after this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do it from the hot tub sometime. All right. All right take guys, care, everybody. Have a good weekend.